34, 35. Oh, yeah. Let's get in there. I did the math on this, and I do believe it. Did you use a calculator, Zach? <laughs> yes. Uh, I ran out of fingers and toes. Um, <laughs> you guys want to hear something embarrassing? I didn't yeah. do the math, and I didn't realize what the numbers were until the very last line of the song. No, that's perfect. That's the experience that I want you to have. I love <laughs> that. Please. Well, why is this record important to the overall story you're telling in this album? Oh, because I just think it's ridiculous and so funny and stupid. It's like absolutely absurd. It was just a fun thing. Again, we, we heard the strings that sounded so like Disney and orchestral and full and pure. And I was just like, yo, what is the dirtiest possible, most opposing lyric that we could write to this? And I was sitting with Scott Nicholson the night that I started writing it. I was sitting with Scotty. And we, we basically, um, Scotty wrote the Gimme Gim Them Babies line, which is my favorite thing in the world is that Scott Nicholson is a writer on 3435. I am maybe sorry. He was like, I was like, hmm, what comes after? Uh, um, I think I'm crazy, way out in crazy, if I put it quite plain. And Scott was like, just give me them babies. And I was like, hey! <laughs> and he was like, I'm joking. And I was like, no, 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 it's to print. We're doing it, it's done, it's perfect. Um, um, yeah, but it, it came up as a total joke and I, and then I became, I like fell in love with it. And then, um, Taylor and Victoria came and we wrote the bridge together and, um, it was so much fun and it was the, we finished it. We started it last year. Um, and then we finished it like months and months and months later when I was like, oh, this needs to be on the album and it has to happen. And it was the night after that big earthquake scared the shit out of me and i was like 4.5 and i made a magic <laughs> and it was after the 4.5 one so that's why that lyric is there um uh, it, friends were like wouldn't it be more than a 4.5 i feel like you're he's way stronger than 4.5 and i was like yes but the earthquake last night <laughs> anyway sorry i'm telling you the whole story of how like everything came that's exactly what do you think we're here for um sorry. I don't want to say the earthquake is the is the reason why, but it is the reason why we have that line. But what what like do you have the rest of the album and then go? There's a hole to fill, and we happen to have that one song that we did a year ago. Yeah, that could be perfect. So I the way I kind of like to move when I'm making stuff is I like to jump around. I don't like to finish things. I write when I start them. Like if I have a verse and a hook, I'll be happy, and then I'll be like okay, let's start something new or, okay, let's do the second verse and then come back and blah, 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 blah. So I like to just kind of, when the ideas are there, go, go, go. And then when I feel like I'm working, when I feel like it's, I'm, you know, I just like to bounce around until something else comes up and that I, I hear something else that I like and we'll start other ideas. And then at the end, we go back and we finish them. Interesting. Like, how do you know that it was time to hit pause on 34 35 like at what point did that song like end and then you picked oh, it oh yeah when my when my mom got there oh <laughs> yeah mm -hmm. she was like hi ariana and i was like <laughs> i was like billy pause 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 can you talk about putting that verse together like the riding verse, the earthquake verse? like how fun was that building out that those lyrics oh, it was so much fun also the thing about getting like me vic and taylor in a room together is I mean, it's just so fun, but also it's magical. Like when three besties sit down to who like know a lot about each other's lives. And intimately know them. each other. Oh like yeah, very intimately. I, I don't really work with people that I don't have a real friendship or relationship with or that I don't feel immediately like connected and obsessed with. You know, I've been working with Victoria and Taylor since the first album. Like it's not even, and it's so much more than that. Like th these are, two women that mean so much to me. So it's so much fun. And um, my friend was there, my, my friend tagged along and was like, when we, it took us like 30 minutes and to write the bridge and, and Chase was like, you guys are, first of all, ruthless. Second of all, that was the most fun. Like he was like, I can't believe that that happened so quickly. And um, yeah, but it was really fun, but yeah. 
Do you channel a different side of yourself for records like this, or is it all just one? It, it, obviously, it's a different positions. Yeah, I think um, the thing about this song that has been my fear since the beginning is that it would distract from the like vulnerability and the sweetness that is the rest of the album. It's very loving. It's very honest. It's very much a reflection of parts of my life. But also, you know, it's just a fun song and it, it deserves a home on the album for sure. And that deserves to be written about for sure. But um, yeah, I don't know. It's just kind of like, I think that everything I do kind of has a little bit of humor in it for sure. And I think the people know that I'm not really like- Making somebody strap in? Sitting here till dawn, you know? Like I'm not really, you know, unless they really think that, in which case I hope that, that, that they work on that. You know, <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I don't know. I, I don't know. I, I've been very nervous about this one because I, again, I don't want it to distract from the rest of it. But, um, but I do love it. And sonically, it's like one of my favorite things we've ever done. Let's go from a song that has humor to a song that, in my opinion, has no humor, but if, I can't listen to it and not cry off the table. Oh, God, what a jump. Yeah, totally different. I'm but here. I've heard the song so many times now, and I cannot get through it without, I don't know, it's just such a beautiful song. Thank you. Dan, have you heard it? What? Have you heard it? Of course. Okay, good. All right. Just want to make sure. Was there an actual moment in your life where you genuinely thought that like love might not be possible again? Yeah, I think that um, you fear that when you experience certain things and you go through like really traumatic, I think that your mind, you know, this isn't, this wasn't written from a 100%, this is really how I feel, but it, but it, that fear is, it, is something that exists, of course, in your head when you let the trauma part of your brain take the command seat mm -hmm. that of course exists and your brain is constantly telling you no you don't deserve this or no this won't happen or no yes this person is too good to be true or yeah you will you know be kind of just in this frozen in this period of recovery for the rest of your life there is there there are moments where that traumatic the PTSD part of your brain takes the command seat and tells you those things. So I think this was written from that place and not from a real, I'm in my right mind and I know that I deserve love place. It was, it was just from a fear place, but it's, it deserves to be expressed and I think it deserves to come out. And I think that once you write something, it kind of goes away a little bit as well. I think that expressing it made it feel so much less legitimate yeah yeah i understand like like you it's like an insecurity that you have that's not you're, you're kind of saying it's not a it's a fear but by yeah. getting it out into the world and writing it the fear loses its value and you realize how ridiculous the fear is and then you're able to open yourself up to love or at least look for it yeah it's like when you share it with someone and they're they have a reaction that is like comforting and supportive and oh this is a beautiful song you're like hmm it's a beautiful song. <laughs> You're like, oh, okay. <laughs> it start like the song does start with fear and you questioning it, but by the end and April comes in, it, the song kind of ends with this human being reassuring you that no yeah. matter what your baggage is, they're there to carry it with you. Yeah. He played the role of the perfect, you know what I mean? Kind of like dream reaction to a fear like that being expressed. Reality, right? Yeah, I kind of brief gave him a little sum up of my, you know, we, we caught up for a while and talked about life and uh, everything. And he kind of, I think, wrote his verse from a perspective of like a person that would be filling, you know, certain shoes and what I've heard that has felt nice. You know, it's nice. I think he did a great, phenomenal job writing uh, that. Is it hard to put that into a song like how'd you oh, yeah. know you were ready? I, didn't know anyone, I didn't know anyone was ever gonna hear it so i just kind of was sitting in my room it was during quarantine and um towards the very beginning and i just had set up my little home situation and 
uh, a friend of Matt Bennett's, Shintaro, had sent me a little folder of beats. And he's amazing, by the way. He worked at the Apple Store, at the Genius Bar, I think. Or like, like was, I think, I think he was giving lessons on how to work, like make beats and stuff. Cool. Like, I think he was the guy that like, you'd go into the Apple Store and be like, oh, I want to make something that sounds like, like Robin Thicke. And then he'd like show you how to make something that sounds like that. And, um, but yeah, he's a really brilliant producer and he sent me a pack of beats and I pulled it up and I wrote a verse and a chorus and I sent it over to Abel and I said, is this okay? And he was like, yeah, I'm going to write the second verse. And I was like, okay. And so that was just how it felt. And it was a very intimate moment and writing process between two friends. Does a song like that only happen after being alone with yourself for quite some time? Because it is a, re- it's very reflective. No, like if you weren't going through it in that moment, you're 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 thinking back. Or I think there's always a feeling at the beginning of of creating something where you're like, hmm, is this for me or is this for people? And this was one that I think was kind of on the line I didn't know (laughs) but then it felt really beautiful and my mom's reaction to it was really beautiful that made me very emotional and I felt like it was the perfect kind of centerpiece in a way to the album um because it does again make every other song on the album make so much more sense it's like okay we start here and we start with a crush and you start with the fun sex and the oh what's your motive what's your you know, whatever, blah, blah, blah. And then it gets to this real point where you're like, oh, wow, I could be falling in love with someone. Is that even a, is that even an option for, for me? You. Yeah. yeah. And then you go into, I think 6.30 is next. And you're yeah. like, well, are you down? What if I lose my, shit? what if I'm old and cr- crazy? And then you go into safety net and you're like, oh, shit, here we go. I'm really here falling for real. This is happening again. I didn't think it could and it is. And then, you know, and then it's like, I think it, it's a pivotal point on it, I think. I think. I don't know. No, it is a huge moment in the overall story that you're telling. Do you know what that story is? And do you realize that story only after the album's done? Oh, no. I, I mean, it's, of course, it's nice to see it come together and make sense for strangers or for other people listening or for people who aren't living through these experiences but to me it's clear because i'm making songs that are coming from a real place and you know i'll be like you know it's like that's the process i wouldn't you know it's like i could sit here and you could give me a word and i can try to make a song about a word but it's not going to be as good as if i sit here and i make a song about some real thought that i had you know (laughs) wow i I, the strings on this record it hit me and I think off the table and Myron are actually connected in some weird way. Did he hear the song? Myron was sitting underneath my feet when I wrote that. So yeah, yeah. He doesn't leave me alone much, but I think he loves that song. I think he also loves chewing my headphones and sitting right next to me as I'm working. And yeah, he's in a little angel. He doesn't leave me alone much. I'll go to like brush my teeth first thing in the morning and he'll come with me and sit under the sink and like look up at me. It's very sweet. Oh, and a little angel. I, I love the dogs at the end of the music video, by the way. Oh, thank you. But not all of them, like not even half of them. I know. I wanted it to be realistic, but not like me like, slipping in the snow. You know what I mean? Because there was fake snow on set and I was like, I'm going to die if Lafayette is added to this and like cinnamon is here and there's like all these dogs. So we, we did a little, a little group. Yeah. How many- Lafayette has to be in the next one. She has to be in some video at some point. Do you have eight? I lost count a long time ago. Okay. Got it. <laughs> is Off the Table, would you say that's one of the most personal songs you've ever written? It's hard to top Thank You Next because it's so so much more straightforward. But I think um, it's different because I'm kind of the only one in there. It's just me and Abel who wrote it. So maybe. But I don't think so. I don't know. They all have I, They all have so much of me in them that I don't know. I don't really like to be like is this the one that means this and I just I don't know I think they all kind of fit in a puzzle somehow how do you know it was time to share this story though because something has to happen Dan I do have an answer for that I think 34 35 (laughs) I'm joking I'm kidding uh well uh, the reason I'm asking that is just like everybody knows like like what you said you've been through a lot in your life and this one you're kind of putting it all out there 
for people to kind of hear your story firsthand. Am I? Now I'm scared. I think it's a good thing. Oh, sh- Don't worry. <laughs> do you have a question or are you just going to say sh- Daniel? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, do you have a question or are you just going to instill fear in me and trigger my anxiety while we but sit isn't, here? Isn't that what you want is tell your story? No, I just, I don't fucking know, dude. I just want to sing and make people happy and say songs and I don't know. All right, well, forget I said that. I don't think about that. If I had, if I wanted to share my story, I'd do more of this, shit, but I only talk to you too. <laughs> All right, well, forget, scrap that. Wait, I'm joking, I'm joking, I'm joking. I'm joking. Uh, and, and I want everybody, and everybody should know that, you know. You're- yeah, but it's also like, a, it's like a, yes, in a way, yes, because it's like I do, I do want some control over what, the narrative is, but at the same time, you know very well that I don't like to spend too much time thinking about that because it's scary. What does 6.30 mean? 6.30 is like 6.30 on the clock down. Are you down? Oh, like down. The, the position of the clock points down. Yeah. <laughs> I was literally like, does the sun set at 6? Does the sun no. set at <laughs> No, both the arms are facing down. I'm really happy this album has thrown you for a loop Zach saying your brain is burning over there that makes a lot I'm so glad um, <laughs> this profound body of work could really <laughs> make you short circuit like dude it's made me think and, and and I really truly have spent a lot of time with it so I am dissecting all of it uh you do need somebody to to, to play video games with you at 2 a.m do you have that right now yeah hell yeah well, congrats that's a big yeah. deal. But we're asleep by 11, 01, or by like 10, 01. We're old. I'm old. I'm an old person. Uh, back in the day, Ariana would be up at probably like 1 o'clock playing video yeah. games, no more? I can't do it anymore. I'm really? tired. Oh, yeah. I'm, t- I'm exhausted. Also, I think the amount that I have worked on this year that was supposed to be my off year is like crazy. I've like never been more nonstop in my entire life, and it's like, kooky i think because like once i made the decision that i wanted to put something out i was like okay now i need to shoot 76 videos do 76 photo shoots in the middle of a pandemic i need to get everyone tested 300 times a week i need to um put together these mixes approve all these masters and i have notes on everything i'm not happy with anything i need to make sure everything is perfect i need to da, 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 da. and i think i just kind of like drove myself a little crazy for a while so i think i was like by the time we were both home from work and done. I was just kind of like, we both were like, okay, good night. <laughs> we were both like, okay, we're in bed by seven, watching Netflix until 10 and then sleeping. You know, like old people routine. This is all that happens. <laughs> do you realize that you want to put out an album only after the songs are done? Or do you go, I'm going to put out an album and then start creating? No, I see a list of like things that I know I would want to be on an album. Even if they're unfinished, I know that there are titles like of things that exist mm-hmm. in my head. And once I see like 10, I'm like, hmm, should I start paying attention to this? Do they go together? Is it cohesive? Does it make sense? And and then I'm like, oh wow, we're on to something. And then like it's just it happens, you don't realize, you know. Like I'll just look at Tommy. We got a little whiteboard in the studio and we write on it and keep lists of like what we really love and make like a little to-do list of what's left to finish on them. But once there's, once we're in the double digits, I kind of look at Tommy and I'm like, hmm, are we here again? And uh, that's always a very exciting moment. Yeah, that's kind of the, when you realize. That you have something, but only until, only when it presents itself. Like you you don't set out with a goal, you set out to create and then eventually. No, yeah, yeah. Skirt skirt is a language unique Mm -hmm. to you. There's a lot of, I don't think so. I don't think that is true. No? I would say that that's not true. Skirt, oh. skirt? Dan is laughing at me. Am I, am I not cool enough to know who, who else uses skirt, skirt? I feel like that's a commonly used thing in rap songs, and it's an ad lib for some rappers as well. You know, they're like, skirt, you know? <laughs> no. I think, it's, I think it's around, Zach. Okay, I think, don't, I think we, don't, we don't coin that one as an Ariana Grande phrase at all. I think, well, we, what, <laughs> I think we, we back out of there quick. What do you coin? Um, I like uh, the nods to the other albums lyrically that are kind of like trickle, like they're kind of trickled throughout the album. I purposely kind of try to tie in certain phrases that 
reflect and tie in other records to make sure that there is a through line and that I did it with Sweetener and Thank You Next as well just to like kind of like wink at the other songs and continue the story and kind of like show the evolution of how situations have evolved and how certain feelings have evolved and changed um so I did a lot of that this time there's a lot of them some of them are more obvious than others but yeah, one of my favorite ones is in Safety Net. And there's a real day star more, is it in my head? I like the in my head reference. That's I like. I like little things like that. I love it because w- one day or even today, somebody can sit down and listen to most, if not all, the albums starting with yours truly and really be able to see a human being progress and grow yeah. and evolve. Sure. Yes. It, it feels like one. Side to side was very meaningful. Uh, bicycle. That, I mean, that you can coin. I don't think anybody else used that. That, Dan, I think is the one where it's the most personal. We yeah. know you asked me before. It's, a, it's off the table, the most personal record I've ever written. I think it's side to side. I can it's see that. It's a really tough, tough. They're neck and neck, but. <laughs> also, shout out to everyone that still is surprised when I'm sexual. It's so funny and it makes me really happy. Give all that I say.